Hey, welcome back to everybody. We're glad you joined us again on YouTube. Yes, I fiddle with this mic. I'm trying to stop, but I love you. Thanks for joining us. It's Seth, Paul, and Mo. We are here today again talking about Southwest folks. People are asking folks, Paul, folks are asking for an update and uh, we'd love to get it. This, as Mo would say, this stock got smoked this weekend, Mo. They are having some sure did. chaos with uh, Southwest. Over okay. 1,100 delays, 1,100 other cancels cancelizations this weekend the, the story is all over the, the map. pilots don't want to get va uh, vaccinated they're uh they're they're um, they're turning to the government to put in some what, what's going on so it's tell funny us. because they th because the like the the unions and the people are saying that it's because of vaccinations but then when you see what southwest is saying they're saying it's because of air traffic control issues and weather issues so there's a huge disconnect here what's happening i i would think that the uh the oil demand paul would affect a company like this yeah and uh, southwest has been very near and dear to our hearts prior for months now paul you we we, we discussed southwest um when things were really bad around covid and and how you were in love with this company uh, due to their financials and what you, you you saw in their future. And so we're going to look at their financials today, uh, see if maybe it is now a time to buy with their stock going down and uh, and go over our stance on, on how we try and separate the company from the, the stock price, uh, if they're in line, if it's undervalued, overvalued. Obviously, Paul, Southwest and Boeing is very near and dear to my heart because I own DGF Spray, my company, one of the many you and I own together, and it's in all the airplanes. So my spray is in these airplanes. I want this puppy to do well. I don't own that business, do you? Well, we own businesses. You oh, mean, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. So talk about, uh, would you like to own the, the company with me? No, I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> I've got plenty upstairs. We doubled our sales this past year. Uh, talk, about, talk about love stock, Paul. So the thing with love is, when we first looked at love last year, we bought it, I bought exactly $25 and zero cents, thinking, okay, it's gonna go down further and buy more. And it just went straight up from there. I sold at 47 through some covered calls and it's currently at $51.69. Now, one thing I want everybody to see is, let's just go right to the eight pillars. Now, for those of you who are new to our channel, our eight pillar analysis is done here. To, there, there are eight pillars we go through. It's only got two checks here, right? So you sit there and say, okay, that stinks. But the reason I liked Southwest is when it was selling for $25 a share, I felt like the stock was a 50 or $60 stock. Yeah, you were saying that. And it's a $52 right now. And I thought that was stabilized when the, everything comes back to market, everything, we, we're, we're a normal economy. Do you feel I, vindicated? What was that? Do you feel vindicated? No, not at all. I mean, I just look at it saying- This was one of our major plays last fall that you were really believed in. And uh, I'm certain we got some hate, but- uh, you were kind of rightish on this one, wouldn't you say? Well, yeah, but you know, at the same time, I was right in the sense of a lot of people were right in the last year and a half, right? Yeah. Uh, but this one's more of a long-term play. I like Southwest. I think last year was their first year of losses in 40 years or something like that, and it took a massive shutdown. Now, you brought up oil. Yeah. Now, why'd you bring up oil with Southwest? You know, we used to actually be in love. We did some shows in the fall before Mo was even on the channel about USO. Remember when you and I were, were in uh -huh. USO, we got in BP early last fall. Uh -huh. oh, it's funny, so I would say last fall, but it's been a year ago now. It's yeah, funny. May was May of last year. And so I just see uh, increased discussion about oil supply, oil demand, the barrels are going up. How is this going to affect, um, and people on Mo's morning show in the morning are asking about how oil is going to affect some of the trading com the companies that are trading. So, so what do you think? So I... I Southwest is a very good job of hedging their oil. That's the reason why they do so well in general, because they hedge their oil very well. They're able to keep the profit going. They, they sacrifice. When you hedge, you're basically sacrificing a little upside to make sure your downside isn't so bad. So Southwest always done that. I think Southwest is the, one of the best run, if not the best run airline. But at the end of the day, it's a $52 company right now when I thought it was worth 50 to 60 when the market comes back. So, let's, so one of the things I'm going to look at, since the eight pillars are so bad, I'm not going to look at these eight pillars. I'm going to look at the company because the eight pillars are bad because of specific reasons, right? So I'm going to go to the income statement and I want to sit there and look at our quarterly numbers. So let's look at these quarterly numbers. This June of 2019, before COVID, 5.53 billion. June of last year, 742 million. That's an 85% drop. Jeez. And then June of this year, 3.62. So it's on its way back up, but it's still not there yet. Go to the previous quarter. 4.79 in, in March of, of 19. Um, 3.88 in March of 2020. That was 
halfway, like literally the COVID yeah. started like mid-February, 1.76. So it, it fell in, it's half of where it was here, but you can still see the trend is getting way better here, right? So do I think it's back to normal? No. Is it on its way? Absolutely. I just, I think my personal opinion about Southwest stock is right now, I think you're paying for what it's, what it's worth. That doesn't mean there isn't more upside potential as it grows and hopefully takes market share, but I'm not adding, to, I'm not adding a position in Southwest at this point because I still think it's not out of the woodwork yet. Now let's see their quarterly. Here's the good news. Out their of quarterly, the woods, you mean? What'd I say? Woodwork. I said out of the woodwork? Yes. Did I really say that? <laughs> yes. Oh, boy. Now, I'm surprised because, you know, <laughs> Out of the Woods is a Taylor Swift song. That yes, I know it is. Oh, well, T.T. Swift is one of my jam. Of hers. So, I mean, so are, we in, the clear, are we in the clear now, Paul? We are. <laughs> okay. Very good. Very well done. Um, so, look at these quarterly numbers. And then plummet, 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 oh, plummet. Boy. But then they're back to getting profitable, right? Let's go look at their cash flow numbers. I want to sit there and look at their cash flow. Now, this is very important to you, this cash flow. Oh, absolutely. Because... Earnings can be manipulated, you know, especially, so look at a company like Southwest. They bring money in for a sale of a ticket, right? They can't, they can't book that as revenue until the ticket, I believe, I believe how they book it is they book it once the ticket's actually been used. So you book a flight for yeah. Friday, they're not booking it until Friday as revenue. Ah, okay. But the cash flow is still booked as money coming in. So we want to look at the cash flow and see where the trend is going. Look at this, look at this. Um, so let's go look at the quarterly cash flow. Look at this big number here. 1.91 billion in the last quarter in cash flow coming in. They're out of the, it seems like they're out of the cash flow negativity here. Right? Boom, boom. So I look at this saying, okay, they're getting back out there. I like this whole Southwest shutdown because to me, it's a short term problem that people are going to exaggerate and worry about. I look at it going, okay, yeah, great, but. Drive down the price as much as you can because I want to buy some shares. Now, when I buy shares at 35 or 40 bucks, absolutely. Because even though I bought it 25 before, I do think it's a 50 or $60 stock. And what we can do is I would go to Stock Analyzer Tool once mode's done looking at the charts because this is where I want to see the company where it's going to be in five or 10 years. If you join the Everything Money community and you want to trade Southwest or other stocks at a more timely basis, swing trade, momentum trading, uh, a long-term trade. You can join Mo in his uh, trading expertise. What are you doing over there, you little sex kitten? So this one is looking decent, but don't be deceived by it. And I'm going to take you over to the, the other chart. So the trend is looking like it's coming through. But with that issue that we had yesterday, let's go and just check out the volume real quick because this is very important to pay attention to. This is a, this is a kind of event where I'm going to say, let this thing calm down and see what happens and maybe go at it today's Tuesday Maybe start looking at it Wednesday or Thursday because you had that, this massive volume day. This is going to throw your weekly stochastic off. It could turn into a downtrend today, tomorrow, whatever. So let it calm down. You're just stuck between two major moving averages. Um, from, from this perspective, daily perspective, don't touch it. From a weekly perspective, let it calm down. Look Wednesday, look Thursday. I don't know when this video is coming out. But at that point, when the video comes out, that's when you can go ahead and look at this. But let that extreme volume from this crazy event calm down. If that sounds like gibberish, watch Mo, Watch more of Mo's trading videos. It was to me for a long time. Paul and I just stared over there watching him with all these colors and, and pinwheels. <laughs> but next thing you know, uh, once you start sticking to some rules, uh, money can be made on the up and down uh, of these stocks in, in, daily or weekly. It's a yep. pretty interesting topic of trading. So join Mo. Paul, you have the stock analyzer tool. We can go into the software behind Paul. You can grab. We'll talk about it. Paul, tell us about what's going on over there. So... This is the hard part. The revenue is still down a lot. As you can tell, even over a 10-year period, the revenue is down. So taking these 4 6 and 8% is a little unfair. But if I'm going to go out 10 years, can I really do 10% growth over 10 years? I mean, that's, that's a big number. So that's why the stock analyzer tool, as useful as is, it's very hard to use on companies that had a massive drop for some reason or mm -hmm. a massive gain for some reason. On a one like There are companies out there. Look at grocery stores. The last year for grocery stores have been amazing. Is that last year of growth... Uh, sustainable? Probably not mm -hmm. because it was COVID related. Now people are going to restaurants again. Like I was just at Bob Evans yesterday morning, every Monday morning, Mary and I have breakfast and it was the busiest we'd seen in two years in, since before COVID. It was jam packed. I was like, wow, this is, it just felt like it clicked yesterday at lunch with my friend, Michael, busiest we'd seen the restaurant in, in a year and a half. It was like, okay, so people are coming back. So you cannot 
reward or punish companies because of COVID. You got to sit there and take a step back and say, so stock analyzer tool is as great as it is. I put in my assumptions. It says that love is worth about 20 bucks a share. Absolutely disagree. No way. Absolutely no chance. It's worth way more than 20 bucks a share. So that's the issue we have. Stock Analyzer Tool is phenomenal when it comes to coming up with an idea of where we stand for a stable company. Unfortunately for, for um, fortunately also for Southwest, the stability isn't there because you saw this massive, I mean, look at this. We got as low as $740 million in revenue. Jeez, though, in a quarter. I mean, look at how much different this is. They, did, they used to do $5 billion a quarter. They got down to $740 million. Mm. So what I'm looking at is saying, okay, if Southwest got back to $22, $23 billion in revenue with 6 or 7% profit margin, I liked Southwest a lot because in the previous year of 2019, they made something like $2.1 billion. And I'm going off the top of my head. When I read their 10K, they had, they had that $2.1 or $2.2 billion was after an $847 million charge because of the Boeing 737 MAX issue. So in my head, I'm like, wait, this is a $3 billion profit company, right? So if I sign a 15 PE to that, that's a $45 billion company. Let's market look at, cap's 30 now. Yeah, the market cap's 30 right now. So is there upside potential? Sure there is, but I look at it going, actually, maybe it's still, I, I don't know. Maybe it's a $70 stock now that everything's come back. I don't know. The whole point is, I do think Southwest is a, is the, is one, is the, I hate to say the best airlines. I haven't looked at all of them, including the small ones, but of the major ones, it's the best one. Well, going from COVID, they were in the best financial position yes. and they could weather the storm the most. Also, I think they made money 32 out of 32 years. And this 2020. I think it was longer than that. Yeah. 2020 was their first year in 30 plus years mm. of not making money. So it took a global pandemic to make them not profitable for a year. So if I'm at home, Paul, I'm looking to invest in Southwest. I'm chomping at the bit because maybe it's down. Uh, I don't thoughts, think you're going to do terrible thoughts. buying it at this price. But I do think there'll be better opportunity. I mean, there this could be better opportunities out there and better opportunities to buy Southwest. But I don't think you're going to do terrible buying at this price. Now, if you have enough money, to buy 100 shares at a time. Maybe you sell puts on it. You pick a price like $40 a share and say, you know, I'm going to sell puts at 40, which by the way, Mo, we might want to consider doing. Yeah. What are the puts selling for right now for 40 bucks a share? So the $40 puts for January 21st, 2022 are selling for 75 cents with an 11% delta. So what this means is somebody will pay you 75 cents per share to give them the right to force you to buy the shares at $40 a share. And according to the market right now, the delta means it's about an 11% chance of that happening. So if you're wanting to buy it at 40 bucks, you can be paid to wait. Now, is it a huge return? No, but you're being paid to wait. Now, the catch is if it goes to $35 a share on that date, you have to buy it for 40 bucks still. But in my opinion, if you're buying at $40 anyway, no matter when it hit 40 bucks, you're still going to have a $5 loss either way. You might as well get paid for that $5 loss. So you can just bank, you can just have five grand sitting in your account and then and then wait till this time frame and make 75 bucks on it? Yeah. Yeah. Which doesn't sound like a lot, but for two and a half months. Of just th doing nothing. Three months to sit there and do nothing to collect, uh, you know, 1.5% of your money in three in, in three months. That's six, that's 6% six a year. Yeah. And of course, sit it, there and wait. And of course it lowers your cost basis. So you would be paying 39.25 for the share. So. Yep. Not, not necessarily 40 bucks. All right. That's a take on Southwest. Uh, we will keep you updated on where it's headed and how uh, the turmoil in the world, Paul, especially with the oil and COVID, how it'll be affecting other airline companies, I'm sure. So follow the thumbs up, join Everything Money community. And oh. follow us on Instagram because it helps our um, precious egos a lot. That's true. See you next video. Thanks. Thanks.